The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. There's a good time coming, boys, a good time coming. So it had to be 53. My friend, Dr. Samuel Rush, he filed a plat for Brennan. Some of you know it as New Brennan, because that's what we called it once it was built, was New Brennan. And it was the basic town around what you know as Oak Park Avenue. It was Bachelors Grove Road back then. And, uh, and the railroad tracks. Uh, they built a, a general store right there, and the Pacific Hotel they built over there. We became a town. There's a good time coming, boys, a good time coming. A good time coming. Shameful rivalries of breach are not made the mark of me. When I first came to Tinley Park, the central part of the village consisted of the village hall, a block of stores, including John Funk's grocery store, a post office, Bettenhausen hardware store, and an IJ store. Across the tracks, uh, we found Deanie's Tavern, Volk's department store, and Sanger Hall. Sanger Hall was the center of social activity within the village and, as a matter of fact, the surrounding area. In the Rock Island parking area was an old, old willow tree, which was kind of a landmark for Tinley Park. Next to it was the elevator and, of course, the old depot of the Rock Island Railroad. Tian's Tavern was on the corner, and across from it was Funk's Tavern. Along 173rd place, uh, were some stores including uh, Ed Hankey's feed store and down a little ways the INR PD Lumber Company. Fred Hick operated a meat market along Oak Park Avenue next to the Bremen State Bank. Across from the bank the service bakery had its installation and down that street just a half a block was the Tinley Park School. That whole area represented the center around which homes had been built and the community had developed.
sorrows on with a dance Who cares about tomorrow? I want to sing and laugh like a clown So no one will know that someone just turned me down On with the dance I need two arms around me You were going to tell me about Mrs. Sanders? Oh, Mrs. Sanders, she was... We didn't realize it at the time. We somewhat disliked her. But then as we grew older, we began to realize that she was a person that formed more into our characters than we realized. This is one incident. I happen to have won this contest, but now that I look back, I'm not that proud of it, but it's something that happened. I had done something in school. I don't remember what it was. I only lived one block from the school, and I could see her coming after me down the, down the hall. Naturally, I became uncomfortable. <laughs> so I decided home would be a much better place than being in school. So I made a beeline for the door, made that, got down to the house, got into my bedroom, and at the time, those springs were not covered, very exposed to your fingers. So I slid underneath the bed, not expecting her to follow, but she did. That teacher followed me all the way home, and I heard her talking to my grandmother, and my grandmother must have agreed with her that we should go in and get me. So, first four grades were had one teacher, and the second four grades had a teacher. Now, my father went to school. He went there, but this, by the time your dad went, possibly, the portion of Central that was torn down a few years ago, because they built the new school at that time was a four-room school, two-story. Okay, that's the one I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because when your dad went to first grade, the school was crowded, and he went in the old village hall. Right, right. Because when Mrs. Sandage was his teacher, and she got married when he was in first grade, because he came home and said, our teacher got married and changed her name from Miss Becker to Mrs. Sandwich. Well, I remember going roller skating over at Sanger Hall when Al and I were going together. Oh, yeah? That's they right. had, uh, that was a real big affair. We'd go over there and they'd be skating every night of the week. Oh, yeah? And at that time, I think the Allworm brothers were taking care of it. Mm-hmm. And that, of course, was Helen Holstein's husband was an Allworm. You don't know the Holsteins, so. though. They had a tavern where Cummings has his mm-hmm. Bert. Yeah, Until Bert round. Cummings, yeah. yeah. Now Sanger Hall, um, did they have a lot of dances and parties? And oh yes, parties? they always had. When there was any big affair, um, like weddings and that, mm-hmm. they, uh, I remember going to fish fries when Whole Weedles had it. Oh yeah? How about political rallies? Did they have political rallies there? Oh yeah, I think they did, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's about the only place in Tinley that, see, at that time there was no American Legion Hall or the VFW. No, of course not. That was the only hall there was. Mm -hmm. How about movies? They used to have movies. They'd put up a big screen 
near the Beatty Lumber Yard, and they would uh, show movies mm -hmm. on Saturday night. Do you remember any special holidays? Well, they'd have, uh, like when they'd have church picnics or something like that, a lot of times they'd end up... remember this a kiss is still a kiss a sigh is just a sigh the fundamental things apply as time goes by and when two lovers woo they still say I love you All that you can rely No matter what the future brings As time goes by Moonlight and love songs Are never out of day Hearts full of passion, jealousy, and hate. Woman needs man, and man must have his mate that no one can deny. It's still the same old story, a fight for love and glory, a case of do or die. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. and love songs are never out of date hearts full of passion jealousy and hate woman needs man and man must have its mate that no one can deny years went by and I did not think of Al, but one night at a barn dance, he asked me for a dance, and then another, and still another. And then after that, there was a, a dance at Sanger Hall, and he wanted to know if I was going, and I, I couldn't say yes, because my father had a rule that we couldn't go unless Adam went, my brother, but I said, maybe, but I did go, and Al was there too, and we had a number of dances, and we sat in the, in the garden and had ice cream and pop, so we danced some more, so as we drifted along then,
the first woman mayor in Cook County? Have there I been any other I believe I, I, was, I believe I was the only one in Cook County, but I'm woman sure mayor. I was the one and only one for Tinley Park. Right. But I don't think there was any in Cook County anyway. I, I think I remember I'm, I, that personally that you were at that time the first woman mayor in Cook County. I believe Take I was. 1949 to 1953. Uh, town celebrations. Let's talk a little bit about that. What did, what did they do back then? Um, and we would have a parade. A, yes, open, right, the town parade. Open car parade. When was, when and the was mayor's the, car would uh, lead the parade. When was that? When would they have this parade? It was usually in the fall. I guess it, uh, the Oktoberfest probably took over, because now I understand they have Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest. just cars. Mm -hmm. I don't recall any floats, nothing as spectacular as that for those years, well, way back then anyway. Steinhagen. He was a very nice man, very big man, and uh, we used to play a few pranks on him. We would we would raise his car and put some blocks under it, and just so the wheels were just barely, not even touching the, the gravel, and uh, then somebody would go through town with the cutout open and make a lot of noise with his car going through, and he would jump up and run into his car and and uh, get in it and try to take off and he couldn't because the wheels were off the ground and he couldn't figure out what it was and <laughs> then after he found out he wasn't going anywhere he'd get out and look and find out his back wheels were still turning but wasn't going anywhere those are some of the pranks that we usually did were during Halloween time and that and I know at one time we had Harry Uthi at that time was police officer in town and I remember we took a cow farmer's cow and brought it up and opened his garage door at home and put the cow in there and tied it up and then closed the door up so then when he got done work and went home there was a cow standing in, in the way he couldn't put the squad car away and things like that we did nothing destructive but uh, it sure was a lot of fun
My dad made frequent trips to Chicago to buy merchandise for his store, because at that time salesmen did not call him at stores. The orders would be delivered by freight train and arrive at the Rock Island Depot and had to be carted to the store. One morning train was called a milk train because that train took the cans of milk the farmers had brought to the depot that morning and would take the cans to a dairy in Chicago. This was taken in the baggage car as the train was also a passenger train. The Great Depression of 1931 made for hard times and many men, men worked on government programs as the WPA. We were lucky that Dad owned a store and we had plenty to eat. During the Depression, people helped each other. The town did not panic, and Bremen Bank stayed solid, which helped the whole community. Tilly Park was small then, but it seems everyone in town and on farms were a close friend. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. Though there's one motor gone, we can still carry on. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. What a show, what a fight. A lot of people in town lost their life on the tracks too, didn't they? Oh. Um, I think so. There were some that lost their lives. Isn't that how Judge Harper died? Yes, he got, uh, yeah, he lost his, uh, over that tracks of his, by his house there. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember Judge Harper? Oh, yes, no, well. No, Did you no, cut no. his hair? Oh, yes. He was yeah. one of your customers, huh? Yes, he was one of our, uh, he was very good friend of my dad. Really? <laughs> yes. What was he like? Oh, he was a very nice man. Was he? Yes. He pleasant was and friendly? Very pleasant, very sociable. And good sense of humor? Yes. He was just a down-earth man. Really? I, I thought he was a real nice person myself. Was he big and tall or he was skinny a big and tall. No, he was a big fellow. Very big fellow. Heavy and set? Heavy set, yes. Mm -hmm. And he was a lawyer? Yes, he was a lawyer, yes. And he was a judge? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And did he have any children? I think he did. <laughs> I think he did. I don't know now if he had a two or three or something like that, the son and daughter or something. I guess he had children, but I never thought. And none of them stayed around here. They weren't around here when I, uh, they didn't, they weren't around. I think he had a son, uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure. If I have made any contribution to the well-being of some of the people I have known and to the positive development of Tinley Park, I am content and I wish for the village, for the schools, for the people, ever-increasing success 
in whatever endeavors they may undertake. There's a good time coming, boys, a good time coming. A good time coming. We may not live to see the day, but there's a glisten in the rain. Charity shall trickle and wait a little longer. 